Kevin rubbed his eyes and yawned loudly. He had been driving for six hours nonstop and it was beginning to take its toll on him. His wife, Julie, gave him a concerned look. Don't you think you should take a break, Kevin? Oh, I'm okay, don't worry about me. Come on, look, there's a parking lot coming up. Why don't you pull in there and take a break for five minutes? Okay, will do. Kevin pulled off the highway into the parking lot and parked up on the side of the road. They had only been there a couple of minutes when a semi-trailer truck pulled into the lot. As it pulled past them, Kevin couldn't help but notice that the driver looked a bit strange. Julie, did you see the driver of that truck? Yes. Was it me or did you think he just looked like a shadow? That's what I thought too. We must be overtired. The truck parked up directly in front of Kevin's car. Suddenly, the door began to open. Kevin and Julie looked at each other in shock. Inside the trailer, they could see a young boy. His face had a look of panic on it. Kevin, we have to help that boy. He looks terrified. Kevin was about to get out of his car when two men wearing suits appeared beside his window. He felt the sting of the needle as it entered his arm. Welcome back to SCP Exposed. Today we bring you Keter Class Subject SCP-2590, Trailer Trash. But before I go on, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on any SCP stories. SCP-2590 is a semi-trailer truck of an international pro star day cab make with an attached trailer. It lacks a license plate on either the front or rear bumper. The model's manufacturer, Navistar International, claims to have no knowledge of ever producing a vehicle like SCP-2590. Observation of the driver's cabin shows a humanoid figure in the driver's seat, designated SCP-2590-1. Its appearance is that of a shadow or silhouette, lacking any identifying physical features. Its significance to the function of SCP-2590 is currently unknown. However, it has been proven to have an amnestic-like effect on humans approaching it on foot. Because of this, Foundation personnel have been unable to question it. Containment of SCP-2590 itself is not currently possible. It has remained within the city limits of Birmingham, Alabama since it has been under Foundation surveillance. The subject is fitted with a tracking beacon, pinging its location to specialized handheld devices, which are provided to all operatives of MTF Gamma 133, street sweepers. Public knowledge of SCP-2590's existence is to be contained by confiscation of video footage and photographs, and administration of Class A amnestics to eyewitnesses. Two plain-clothed members of Mobile Task Force Gamma 133, street sweepers, are to trail the subject in a Foundation-provided civilian vehicle at all times, exchanging shifts with another pair of operators every four hours. The vehicles are to be equipped with dashboard video cameras, which are to be recording at all times. In the event SCP-2590 pulls over to the side of the road or in a parking lot, the pursuing operatives are to park directly behind it with a full view of the trailer door and notify the Active Situation Room Commander of MTF Gamma 133 Street Sweepers immediately. The operative occupying the passenger side of the vehicle is to take written notes of his or her observations. Under no circumstances are personnel to approach SCP-2590-1. SCP-2590 selectively interacts with tangible objects, allowing it to pass through physical matter. For this reason, the Foundation has been unable to physically contain it. This was discovered when it passed through a Foundation roadblock unhindered. It has also, on occasion, avoided collisions this way. SCP-2590 has not been refueled since it came under Foundation monitoring, nor has it broken any traffic laws. At times determined by unknown variables, SCP-2590 will park at the side of the road or in a parking lot, and the trailer door will open of its own accord for exactly 60 seconds before closing again. During the time the door is open, the trailer will be occupied by a single object. The object within the trailer is different each time the door closes and opens again. Each instance is unique, and no object has ever been observed twice. Attempts at entry or exit from SCP-2590 while the trailer is open have been met with failure due to an invisible barrier. The barrier also seems to stop sound from escaping. The following are some examples of the objects observed inside SCP-2590. A Kit Kat Chunky Brand Chocolate Bar. A small cardboard box labeled Jim's Collectibles with black marker. A blank Polaroid photograph. A VHS tape and a smartphone. 
a human male of approximately 11 years of age. Subject appeared to be stricken with panic. Subject was reported to have not attempted to escape from SCP-2590, with Agent Orpik stating in his report that the subject was paralyzed with fear. A human female of approximately 40 years of age. Subject recognized Agent Inglis, who identified the subject as her sister. Agent Inglis was said by her partner, Agent Schultz, to be in considerable distress. Efforts to recover the subject from SCP-2590 failed. Soon after, Agent Inglis' sister was found at home unharmed and said that she had been cleaning at the time of the incident. She denied that she had been anywhere else during that time. A human male, identified as Agent Moore, of note is that Agent Moore was on duty with Agent Hall at the time of this instance. Moore was said by his partner to be puzzled and shocked. Subject inside SCP-2590 also appeared to recognize his duplicate outside of the instance. Attempts to extract the subject once again failed. An eyeball of unknown species, measuring approximately 2 meters in diameter. Agents Kilhorn and Hayes were on duty at the time, and video footage shows the object rotate 180 degrees to view them. Both agents reported a feeling of intense uneasiness and nausea followed by sharp abdominal pains once SCP-2590's door closed. Following their shift, the agents were sent for medical evaluation, where X-ray examinations revealed potentially malignant tumors growing inside the agent's large intestines. Surgery was successful in removing these growths, and both agents have since made full recoveries. A human female identified using dashboard camera footage as Dr. Robinson. Subject attempted an unsuccessful escape. Subject tried to converse using sign language, which neither agent could understand due to lack of training. The real Dr. Robinson was found to be in the break room in Site-17 at the time of this instance. A large steel slab, the front face of which appeared to fit the dimensions of the doorway perfectly. The slab displayed the logo of the foundation. 16 seconds into the instance, copious amounts of blood began to drip downward from the top of the object from an unknown source. It continued to pour until the slab was no longer visible, with liquid welling up at an unseen barrier. At 52 seconds of the instance, the slab and an immense amount of blood, almost the entire volume of the trailer, launched out of SCP-2590, traveling toward observing agents Inglis and Schultz at a speed of approximately 190 kilometers per hour. Six members of MTF Gamma-133 street sweepers were deployed to the scene to investigate and initiate cleanup efforts. Inglis and Schultz were pronounced dead at the scene. A two-kilometer perimeter in every direction was established, and Class A amnestics were administered to individuals within it. Subsequent DNA tests on the blood ejected from SCP-2590 have indicated it to be roughly 50% Inglis and 50% Schultz's. The steel slab, which was undamaged from the collision with the agent's vehicle, has been taken into Foundation custody for lab analysis. On April 12, 2011, at approximately 0315 hours, SCP-2590 traveled to the location of an abandoned warehouse where its tracking beacon ceased operation. Eight members of MTF Gamma-133, henceforth referred to as Alpha Squad, were dispatched to the warehouse. Inside, SCP-2590 was found traveling at low speed deeper into the building. Two members of Alpha Squad were left outside to keep watch. Radio contact was maintained with Alpha Squad leader during the investigation. The following is a log of communications between Alpha Squad leader and Mobile Task Force Commander of Gamma-133. All right, we're inside the building. We have a visual on SCP-2590. Anything unusual inside? Nothing we can see so far. It just looks like a plain abandoned warehouse. Update, the skip has started moving away from us. Looks like it's headed away from the entrance. Alpha Squad. Follow the target. Find out where it's going. The sound of SCP-2590's trailer door opening can be heard. The skip's trailer door is opening. I repeat, target's trailer door is opening. What do you see? Uh, one second. It's a big sheet of what looks like parchment. It says, I'm just delivering a message. Alpha Squad, proceed with caution. Aye, we've descended about a kilometer now. We still haven't seen the end of this thing. Note that this is geographically impossible as the warehouse is overlooking a cliff. Alpha Squad, be advised you are continuing into a confirmed spatial anomaly. That tunnel shouldn't be there. If anything particularly unusual happens, pull out of there immediately. Affirmative. 
Radio reception with Alpha Squad Leader degrades sharply at this point. Squad Leader, do you read me? We're losing you. Yes, we seem to be... Interference, please. Squad Leader, come in. Squad Leader, please respond. There was no response. Damn it. Radio contact was terminated on Alpha Squad side. The channel remained open for an additional six hours, after which the two guarding agents were recalled to MTF Gamma 133 base and Alpha Squad was declared MIA. On November 3, 2015, radio contact was made on Alpha Squad Leader's transponder once again. The following are the communication logs from when radio contact was re-established. Come in, MTFC. I repeat, come in, MTFC. I repeat, come in, MTFC. This is Alpha Squad Leader, do you copy? Who is this? How did you get this comm channel? Uh, this is Alpha Squad Leader. We lost communication with you there for a few minutes. State your full name and rank, soldier. Alpha Squad Leader, Michael Bridges, Staff Sergeant MTF Gamma 133. What's going on, sir? MTF searched their database. Alpha Squad Leader, you and your squad have been MIA for almost three and a half years. I'd say you have some explaining to do. Sir? We were pursuing SCP-2590 when we lost radio contact with you. We couldn't go any further because of the carbon monoxide, so we turned back to reestablish communication. We weren't gone longer than 15 minutes. What? Were you able to collect further intel on SCP-2590? Negative. Once we turned back, the skip just kept going, like it knew we weren't coming with it. Very good, Alpha Squad. You can come home now. The report from Alpha Squad leader confirmed the warehouse to contain a temporal and spatial anomaly. The building has been purchased by a Foundation Front Company to prevent civilian access. SCP-2590 was tracked exiting the warehouse approximately five minutes after Alpha Squad was recalled to MTF Gamma 133 base. What do you think about that SCP case? Please leave your comments below.